What's going on YouTube? It's Reed from Work Turbo and today we're going to cover external wastegates. This is part one of most likely a three-part series and we're going to just start with the basic hookup of your actuator. I've got a TurboSmart. Uh, this is a Hypergate 45. We sell the TurboSmart and the Tile. These instructions will be the same for both models um, or both brands. If you have a different brand wastegate, please refer to the manufacturer's instructions. You've got two connections on your wastegate that are meant for boost pressure. We're going to refer to this connection as the upper port because it's in the top of the um, actuator motor above the diaphragm. This is the lower port. It is below the diaphragm. The diaphragm cap is here. Inside that cap you will have various springs that can be installed or combined to achieve different boost pressures. This one came with a seven pound spring according to the box on the label. Do you want to assume that that is going to be correct? No, no you don't. So what we need to do first is test your actuator before it ever goes on the car. Super important. This will save you a lot of headache and a lot of grief. How do you test it? Easy. Paint gun regulator, old boost gauge, vacuum hose, everything that you should have sitting around in your home shop pretty easily. If not, you can go grab this at any good parts store. Bottom port of the actuator. This is where we want to do all of our tests. So hook up your vacuum line, start adding some pressure, and watch and feel for the valve to move. This one has a seven pound spring. We should see movement starting right around seven to eight pounds. Boom. Why is it not fully open at seven pounds? Pretty straightforward. Let's get it just on the crack pressure. So we started right there at seven. There's always gonna be exhaust pressure on this side of the valve. So with my finger, I can just push and the valve will come right open. So that spring compensates for the delta in the exhaust. So your pressure on this side acting against the spring. All right, so seven pounds, this one moves. Go ahead and check, make sure it does come fully open. We've got full actuator travel at around 13, 14 PSI. If they're used actuators, it's always good to make sure everything moves. And, um, well, I got it hooked up, or back hooked up. Also, listen for air leaking on the bottom part of the, the valve guide area. You're going to have some air that bypasses this, but it should not be a large amount. If it's a large amount, you may need to have the wastegate serviced if it's used. Um, some actuators, if they are brand new and it has a noticeable amount of leakage, it can be engineered into the system to compensate for that leakage as long as the actuator starts moving close to the spring pressure base, um, you should be okay. All right, Reed, I'm, I'm putting this on my car for the first time. I want to go for a test drive. I do not want to send it to the moon. What do I need to do? I've got all these fancy boost controllers with these solenoids and dump valves and CO2 tanks and electronic doodads. No, just, just disregard all of that for right now. Very simply, bottom port of the gate, exactly where we tested the pressure. Just take this and go direct to your compressor cover boost reference port. It may be in this location, it may be over here, it may be on the top, but uh, super simple. Direct connection from here to here. When this turbo makes seven pounds, this gate's gonna start opening. Reed, I've got a uh, boost that continues to rise past my spring pressure. What is my problem? Well, that's gonna be potentially a, well, it's actually gonna be another video. We're not going to cover the exhaust side and where to plumb the wastegate in for the exhaust and talk about exhaust priority. But if you have what we call boost creep, where it starts, you have a seven pound spring, you confirmed it starts moving at that point, you confirm the wastegate opens and closes, and the boost continues to rise, you've got a condition called boost creep. That means the valve cannot physically flow enough exhaust through it to slow down the turbocharger. So that can either be simple simply fixed by a larger valve 
or it may be a little more complicated and you have to replumb the exhaust uh, that feeds this side of the, uh, of the system. Like I said, we'll cover that in another video. The second port on the actuator, I get this question all the time. Do I need to block this off? No, do not block this off. It will mechanically vacuum lock the motor and will not allow it to move because that will seal up the top side of the diaphragm. This needs to be vented to atmosphere. If you're in a dusty situation or a daily driver car, you need to put a filter on this or route the vacuum line back to your air filter inlet or in an area that's not going to get dust and dirt uh, and bugs. <laughs> so keep it clean. It'll last a long time. Let me unhook this. The other question I get is the opposite. Reed, I put all this stuff together and my turbo is super laggy. I cannot get, I put a seven pound spring in there. I get three or four pounds of boost and I have to just take the car all the way to red line to get my seven pounds. What's wrong? Well, rookie mistake and even a professional mistake because we've done it. I've done it. I just pulled this pipe out of my fabrication stash. This is where your wastegate Get you a better camera angle here. We'll hook up to the uh, to the exhaust system. Tile and Turbo Smart and most others have a valve seat. The valve seat goes between the valve inlet and the flange. This is very important. It will go together without it. And without it, you can see right through there, you're going to have a very grossly large internal exhaust leak. Any type of leak on this side is going to contribute to lag. So please, please make sure your valve seat is installed. A um, couple other tech tips. Anti-seize. Always use anti-seize on your V-bands. I get more phone calls for people needing replacement V-bands because they tightened everything up with you know, a little electric impact gun and we went to go loosen it and it just seized up completely. All of our, um, see if I had it sitting here. Yep. All of our tile and turbo smart come with mil spec silver coated lock nuts. These do provide some amount of anti galling pr priority principle <laughs> properties. <laughs> Let's get it right. But always put anti seize on this. Um, all your vacuum line connections, uh, use liquid Teflon and make sure that if equipped, your wastegate has the optional port locations, like in this turbo smart, you can put the ports here or here blocked off and tight. A lot of new wastegates will also have water ports. Those do not have to be used. Just plug them off and life will be good. Um, if you're in an installation that needs the water cooling to protect it from heat, then go ahead and hook it up. Um, super simple, super straightforward. Bottom port of the gate, straight to the compressor cover. That should give you your base spring pressure. Guys, I appreciate you watching this. Um, the next video, I'll go over a simple manual boost controller installation, and then we'll go on to electronics. Um, if you have a suggestion for a video or need some help, drop me a comment down below. And I'll be happy to try and take care of you on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, do everything YouTube wants you to do so I can keep making these videos. I appreciate you. Y'all guys have a wonderful day.